giant player is going to zero. I'm looking for something bigger. Somebody out there is in trouble. We don't know who they are yet. We'll find out soon. It'll probably happen in the next 30 days. Seeing a grocery bill or a gas bill and just going, whoa. I mean, that, that really is, uh, it, it affects everyone and, and it's visceral, I think. Are you, are you seeing that in polling? Uh, yes, we are. And the tragedy is that we've tried to explain this to the Biden administration because they're the ones that need to know and they've refused the presentation. So on your show, I'm going to tell you what I would have told them if they had only listened. We are 13 days away from an absolute explosion on inflation. There are three holidays, there are three moments when Americans take to the roads and when Americans buy more food than at any other time of the year. Christmas, Thanksgiving, and the 4th of July weekend. And everyone's going to be filling up their car 13 days from now, and they can't put $40 or $50 in their tank. They actually have to fill it up, and that's when the explosion hits. They can't just buy 80% of what they want. They have to fill their shopping carts for the barbecues and the, and the cookouts. And 13 days from now, the American people are going to come face-to-face -face with these higher prices and face-to-face -face with the fact that they can't afford it. You have to go back to 2009, 13 years ago, to find a time when these economic numbers are as bad as they are today. And the difference is that back then, it affected roughly 60% of the population. Now, with inflation, no matter who you are, no matter where you live, no matter how much you make, you're impacted by it. And that impact will be, will be felt shortly. And finally, Donald Trump misidentified the stock market as being the aspect of the American economy that people related to when they decided whether things were good or bad. Joe Biden is misidentifying jobs. Right now, you only have a tiny percentage of Americans that feel in any way insecure or unaffected. But inflation touches everyone everywhere. And unless he gets this inflation under control, where people are not exasperated and are not furious and anxious and angry, unless he does something immediately, this is going to affect the midterms, this is already affecting his popularity. And quite frankly, Joe Biden is the most unpopular president at this moment in his term since Jimmy Carter. You'd have to go back to 1978 for the last time a president had ratings this low. When you're conducting polls, and I'm sure you're asking not just how is inflation affecting you and how important it is, but you must ask for for who do you think caused it? Who do you think is responsible? What do you get? Do you, the, the Putin price hike. How many people buy into that? I guess they might say maybe part of it is that, but how many think that that's the main reason that, that we're in this uh, situation? That, and that's the right question to ask for a political impact. And a significant percentage, about a third, blame the war in Ukraine for what's happening, although we're not even talking about the shortages. Right now, you can get food, but it's really expensive. With what we know is going to come out of Ukraine in the months to follow, we're not even going to be able to get the food by the time we go into the early fall. And again, I don't think the Biden, the Biden administration is afraid of the political impact, so they're downplaying the personal impact. And the truth is they should be candid. The other thing that people blame, about 25 percent, are corporations for taking the opportunity for charging too much. And again, the Biden administration is trying to blame ExxonMobil and companies like that for the reason why gas prices are so high. The key is not who they blame. The fundamental key is who they think is trying to solve it. And this is where the administration comes up short. It was the biggest mistake, and I'm a language person, and that word that they used again and again for the first couple months that this is only transitory, there are millions of people, literally millions, who now know what that word means and now blame the administration for not doing more. So looking backward, they're not necessarily blamed for having ignored it or for having not done enough. But looking forward, they're absolutely held responsible for why this problem is getting worse and worse. And mark my words, 13 days from now is when it's going to hit its peak. I said on our first quarter earnings call that you should not take silence as inaction, that it's an art form in running a company to know what to do and what not to do, to know when to do it and when not to do it.
I said that AMC would pounce when the time was right. Since that earnings call, I can't tell you how many tweets I've received that have asked, so when are you going to pounce? <laughs> when would the time be right? Just as has been the case before, on the advice of counsel, I cannot tell you today what we will do or when we will do it. But I can safely say that in looking at all the surroundings and circumstances before AMC, we likely will not do anything, we will likely not pounce prior to the announcement of our second quarter earnings, which will occur a month or two from now. Well, let's take a look at what surroundings and circumstances Adam Aaron's talking about. S&P 500 down 120 points. Inflation continuously rising. The housing market bubble coming down. Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all other crypto crash. And for circumstances, AMC is still about $5 billion in So debt. not to necessarily put a time period on it, but this is aside from the TA we usually do on the channel. What do you guys think is coming? Drop it in the comments because I personally have a good idea. Not to throw a time frame out there in general, but I personally have an idea of what's coming. I personally don't think the blood is over. I think the SPY has potential to come down to 350, but there is potential for the SPY to be saved. Now, if we hop over here on the weekly chart, I want you guys to take a look at this. Um, if we do end up, you know, staying on this little trend uh, that, that we have mapped out, the SPY can start to find a bottom right now at around 360 and start to curl back up in the short term. Now, this is a single possibility, but I also don't think uh, it's it's completely out to down to touch the 382, right? Uh, this is this would be at 320. This is worst case scenario, uh, but dead center of that would be 350. I do think that we have potential to come all the way to that halfway mark and touch 350 on the S&P 500. Uh, but if not, this is essentially what you're going to see, this slow grind uh, to hug this line, to hug this level, and essentially get us back up uh, to new highs. But personally, I don't think the blood is over. And what does that mean for AMC? What does that mean for GameStop? If the cycle is going to play out, which it is on GameStop, this is right where we're at. Uh, essentially, you're going to see a little bit of a down turn come Monday followed by a rip right for the rest of the week that that's essentially what I'm looking at for GameStop to at least come back up and test 160 uh, or if not 155 156 somewhere close up to there I wanted to give you a couple scenarios on AMC so a lot of people are talking about it doesn't go below uh, doesn't go below 10 because they don't want collateral haircuts to kick in essentially they're going to have to put up more collateral if this goes to a certain price and 10 bucks being that price this is what's next of the cycle that we've been tracking we have it mapped out here in the small term, small perspective. Likely to play out is the inverse one, especially if the SPY does start to get that slow, slow relief uh, up until July when the next rate hikes are announced, right? So if you do see this uh, right now, uh, you saw this break out of the flag uh, a little bit above 12 bucks. I think that's that's essential to pay attention to. And the beginning of next week is kind of going to tell us where we're going. Either way, I do see us tapping back down on this overall trend line uh, before getting that rip. Now, what else points at the inverse rip uh, besides the collateral are these levels. Okay, so what it's going to do is come up to an important level at, at around 1450, uh, break above that and come back down and base on it before the next rip. Now, the next big rip actually brings us to uh, this level at 20 bucks and 22 cents where it recently bounced off of back here and it got rejected at here and here and i think uh this is a pretty pretty decent drawing just for flipping the cycle inverse uh to see that this is around where it's going to get rejected again or essentially break that rejection mark uh so personally guys i do think you know, I'm going to stand bullish on next week. I don't think the shorts are, are going to try and push it too much lower, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Overall, that is the technical analysis update. Analysis update. I want to look at one more thing. DRS shares on GameStop, extremely high, 43% of free float. When we won on options, Shane calls 20,000 versus 7,000 puts. Uh, there's not really any going on here, right? Short exempts dropped extremely low to under a thousand. The cost to borrow fee on GameStop is not looking too appealing for anybody to to you know continue shorting. And if that is the case, GameStop could be setting up for a nice move. Also, 
Stock with Jack is reporting zero shares available uh, to borrow on AMC. I don't know how accurate this is, but this is the number we're looking at right now. AMC didn't quite win the options chain. The algos are going to play this little slow bleed in, in the beginning of next week, just letting those uh, the, the options chain soak up on there. Actually racked up a bit here. Uh, and what I think that's from is just the cost to borrow not actually coming up uh, too much. GameStop's about double what AMC is. So guys, that is what I got for you for this video. Get ready to start the trading challenge next week. We are going to actually start making the trades. People's funds were settling. And if your funds didn't settle, guys, just let me know in the free Discord link down below. Without further ado, guys, uh, that is all I got for you for the video. Enjoy the three-day weekend. Make sure to have post notifications on so you're ready when I put out another video on AMC or GameStop or whatever stock it is. Yeah, if you want to become a member, hit the link down below. You can get view videos earlier than the public, and there's much more perks applied to the members. Uh, we're also going to eventually be doing live day trading on their futures trading. Uh, I plan on doing that. And also, if you want six free stocks, make sure to hit the link down below. I love you all. Lottery stocks.